Hello and welcome to Mal Makes. Today I'm going to be painting the silent cartographer level from Halo 1. This is the full version. If you're interested in the time lapse, you can click on the card here. Otherwise, let's get started. For the silent cartographer level, um, I've done a sketch here of what my plan is. Now the first thing I need to do is go ahead and kind of paint in my sky. And I'm going to go ahead and kind of fill that in without any regard to anything else. Um, I will be drawing in my horizon line here just so I know where it is because there's no point in trying to paint the sky all the way to the bottom of the canvas. So I'm going to draw my line, mix up my colors, and then just fill in my gradient here. For my sky colors, I have a light blue, and this is um, titanium white with primary cyan. Over here, um, it's just more cyan, and then I mixed a little bit of this ultramarine blue into it. And then I just have some pure ultramarine blue just to bring it in a little bit more at the top. So I'm going to start with this light color down here at the bottom, where my horizon line is. I'm just going to bring this all the way across and then just feather it up. Once I'm happy with my two color gradient, I'm just going to add a little bit of this ultramarine in at the top just to darken it just a little way up here. I've really let the sky dry because the next step I don't want anything to mix into it. So what I'm going to be doing is kind of doing a light splattering of stars across it and they're going to be very tiny and then I'm going to work my way into some more that are brighter and bigger. And I'm going to do this with a liquid white. Now this is golden high flow and titanium white and this is kind of like pure liquid. It's almost like a white ink. And then I'm also going to be using a toothbrush to apply it. Now what I do is I put this on my palette and then um, very flatly I just kind of tap the top of the bristles to it and then I just pull the bristles back and kind of splatter them across the canvas. Now I don't want too many of these um, because it is sort of daytime on this part of the ring. You don't see many stars, but because it isn't a whole planet like it is on Earth, you will see some of them. Now I just have the tiniest little bit on the tips of my bristles, and I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of splatter them onto my canvas. And I'm kind of working a bit far away. Um, sometimes when I do this I get real close. That kind of gives me some smaller ones. But because I'm a bit further, it will give me a few bigger ones. I'm really happy with how this first splattering of stars turned out. And I think I'm actually going to leave it alone. But I did want to talk about what my next step was going to be in case I didn't like it. Now, if I thought they were too small and I didn't have enough of the big bright ones, um, what I was going to do was going to be taking this empty paint marker and it's filled with the same liquid white that I just used to do this. And I was just going to do like perfect circle dots on here just to bring a few more big stars in. Um, and that was going to be my next step, but I like how it looks and I don't want to overdo it, so I'm just going to leave it alone. Everything is very dry so it doesn't accidentally scrape up while I'm drawing or erasing any chalk. But the next thing I need to do is start drawing some things in. So I'm going to go ahead and redraw my horizon line down here. And then I'm going to start to draw in the halo as it comes up through the center of the painting. When I was drawing both sides of the halo, um, you'll notice I had my T-square up. Now, um, I already put it away, but when I was doing the T-square, what I was doing is lining up my center line with the T-square and trying to figure out um, exactly where each side should go. So you can see that 12 right here is in the middle because my canvas is 24 inches wide right here. And I kind of want like exactly one inch on each side. So I kept moving it around to make sure the math was correct. So it was exactly in the middle going all the way up. Now I've also gone ahead and kind of drawn in this little bit of an arch here. Now with the way the ring is and the light is um, and looking at different screenshots of Halo 1, part of it does go into shadow at certain points. So this is going to kind of be my shadow on the ring. How I'm filling this in is I'm doing the blue first and I'm going to kind of do a gradient as it goes towards the top. Like I did the sky except all my colors are going to be a bit darker besides this one down here. This one down here is going to be super light. Um, I've added a lot of white into it and it's just going to kind of be the base for down here. I 
I filled in the shadow here with some ultramarine blue and Mars black just to make it a bit darker because I noticed it wasn't dark enough with the gradient. And the next thing I'm going to do is start to sketch in some of these clouds. And they kind of just go along this way and go up. So I'm just going to fill them in and then we'll start painting them. To fill these clouds in, I'm starting with a darker gray. And I'm just going to kind of give them a solid coat of this first. So I'm just going to kind of brush this in. And then I'm going to start to layer it with lighter and lighter clouds, um, just kind of getting towards white. Next I'm going to take a lighter gray, and I'm not to white yet, but I'm going to just kind of fill in on top of the clouds I have and just kind of like smooth them together but still show some of that darker gray through it. My last color is pure white, so I'm just kind of filling it in in the middle of these and just kind of blending it out on top of everything else. To fill in the clouds and the shadows, I've just mixed some of my darkest gray that I first put down with a little bit of this blue that I had. So I'm just going to work in a few more clouds up here just to complete it. For my next layer, I've just added a little bit more white just to bring in a little bit of highlights. The next thing I'm going to do is kind of work on the edge of the halo and there's a little bit of a shadow that it creates um, from having an edge. So I'm just going to take the dark gray that I had for um, filling in the shadows of the clouds here and just kind of bring it down along the edge. I finished filling in the halo itself, but it doesn't look complete yet, but I think that's because some of the clouds are going to end up covering some of it, and it will look a little bit more natural then. Um, so you can see there's a really dark edge here on the left, and that's kind of the edge where it's getting wrapped around into shadow. Now on this side you can see it's kind of casting a shadow onto the um, land or the hard part of it. And up here I'm really happy with how this shadow turned out and how those clouds turned out. So the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and start to mark in some cloud shapes with the chalk pastel, and they're going to kind of cross the whole canvas here. Now what's happening is if you imagine this like a ring of tape, we're kind of standing on the inside here, and the clouds are floating above us, and they're going to float above us all the way up the side of the ring. So these clouds are going to kind of come this way, and then we'll see them straight on, and then we'll see the bottom of them as they come out this way, which is why we're going to see clouds across the whole thing here. Now in my sketchbook, I've gone ahead and done a little bit of a test to make sure my colors are coming together right. I'm using the same colors I had used for the clouds here, but I'm adding in just a touch of blue. Now they're going to look a little bit different once I get them on the canvas because I didn't sketch these in first, but I'll sketch these in here and then I'm going to paint them in a similar way. To fill these in, I'm going to be using a few different brushes. Now I have three here because I'm going to be using three different ones. I have a big one for big clouds, a medium one for medium clouds, and a little one for the small clouds where it starts to come around to the bottom of the ring here. Now you want to think about um, different size brushes for what you're painting. I use a big brush for big things and little brushes for little things. Um, as for shape, I have a flat wash here on the your left. Um, and then I have rounds over here. So if I'm painting something with real straight lines, I tend to go for these, but for clouds, they're very round, so I want round brushes. And as for color, I'm starting with the mid-gray that I had here, um, not the white and not the very, very dark. And I'm gonna just start to kind of fill these in with some circle motions. Um, and I'm gonna kind of just fluff them up.
Once I'm happy with how this layer looks, I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit of blue to the clouds. And because the sun is kind of on the right, which is why this shadow is getting cast here, it's going to go on the left side of all my clouds. And I'm just going to tap it in a little bit, just so there's a little bit of shadow. The last step is to go ahead and start to add in some titanium white. And I'm just going to be using the same brushes, so I have the big brush here. And I'm just going to kind of give these clouds some highlights. I like how things are looking, and my next step was going to be bringing up a haze from the bottom with a transparent white, but um, Steven came to take a look and he thought that I forgot some land, and I was like, yes, of course I did. I forgot to put some land in on the halo. So I've mixed up a couple different greens, and I'm just going to kind of block it in a little bit in some areas because the clouds will be covering a lot of it, and then I'll just bring some more of my grays over to kind of blend it together and fix the layers. Next I was going to bring that haze up, but some of this is still wet, so in the meantime I think I'm going to start to block in some of the ocean. I have kind of a blue-green here, so I'm just going to kind of fill in the base of where it goes. So I'm realizing I'm a little concerned about making sure I have a nice straight line, so I'm just going to grab some painter's tape and then just tape this off. To fill in the haze, I'm using a liquid white, and it's um, slightly transparent, and I just added a little bit of black to it so it was slightly gray, and I'm just going to paint from the line and then feather it upwards. I'm not super happy with the gray here, but I think I did need to put it down before I put a layer of white, so now I'm just going to take some transparent white with a soft brush and kind of just do the same thing, brush it upwards and fade it out. I've drawn in the majority of the land. There's a couple little rocks that sit out in the water I was going to put and some along the base of this little plateau here, but um, I'm just going to be painting over them anyway, so there's not much point in me adding a ton of detail. So what I'm going to do is mix up some base colors, kind of a sandy color and then more of a rock color for here, just so I can start to place where things are going to go because right now I'm having a hard time seeing it with my chalk pastel like not showing up all the way over some colors. I've had to switch back and forth between the gray and the white and even then it's still hard to see. So I'm just gonna paint in kind of a base color and block that in, and then I'll start adding some more detail. With all these colors blocked in, it's time to start adding some details. Now I have omitted some of the details, like the tree that's going to go on top of this plateau. Um, there's no point in drawing that or even filling that in now just because things are going to get covered up and I'm just going to have to redo it anyway. The same goes for some of the trees that start down here and some of the rocks that end up down here. I'm just going to end up redoing them, whether I draw them or paint them, so I'm just going to leave them alone and fill them in later, and then I can just kind of ground them by giving them shadows. So back into my sketchbook, I've done kind of a test of how I want the faraway cliff face to be. So I've done some experiments with colors in here and just textures of how I'm applying the paint, and I think it works best if I kind of just tap in the colors and kind of go through the entire palette that I want to put on here. So I kind of have a darker version of the color that's already here, I have a lighter version, um, there's a little bit of red and a little bit of green in there too. I've just mixed them all with this base color I have here originally, which is burnt sienna, um, some gray, and then I think I just kind of toned it down a little bit with a little bit of blue. But I'm going to kind of use all those colors um, 
or that color mixed with all my other colors to kind of give the same texture where I'm just kind of tapping these colors in and kind of blending them naturally as I go. With kind of a base layer down, I'm just going to go ahead and kind of use the same colors to add in some detail, making a bit stronger lines and not just so much a muddy mess. Just like I did the haze, I did a light wash of a light gray on top of this faraway cliff. Um, and I did that to kind of change the difference between that and the plateau because I was worried um, they wouldn't be contrasting enough with each other. They would kind of blend together and you wouldn't be able to tell that there was a different one here compared to the one in black. But now on this one over here, I'm just going to go ahead and kind of do the same thing, except instead of being so washed out that my colors were already, um, they're going to be a bit more saturated, a bit more um, bright. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill that in. I did a little bit of green on top of this plateau, but I'm not calling it done yet just because I will be putting a tree there and I think I may have to change the shadows a little bit. And then I did this little tiny peninsula out here and I kind of did it the same way I did this one. Just some of the same colors, um, smoothing them together because it's sand there and not rock. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and do this next one here and I'm going to kind of do the same thing with it. My colors are going to be very smooth, um, trying to keep in the sand theme with highlights hitting on top and then kind of fading down into a darker color closer to the water. I filled in the sand a new base color. Um, I kind of just wanted to change it, so I just went ahead and redid that. But now I'm working on starting to add some value to it and some texture. So I'm doing a couple things with this. I'm thinking about the sun being kind of here and casting a hard light here on the top of this little bit of a hill. And then I'm also thinking about how when sand gets wet, it gets darker. So with the waves coming up along the shoreline here, it's going to get dark down there. So I'm thinking about all those things as I start to add some value, and that's kind of why I choose the colors I choose um, and why things are going to be lighter versus darker. I put up some more tape because I noticed before my horizon line wasn't straight. I had just kind of taped it here and here and it kind of dipped in the middle. So when I peeled it back, um, my horizon line wasn't actually straight. So this time I made sure it was straight and I went ahead and refilled that part in. And I couldn't quite make the exact same color. It was really, really close. So I just went ahead and gave this another coat. And then in my sketchbook, I went and did a little test of how I want the ocean to go. And I tried a couple different things. I made it a bit smoother back here and a bit choppy up here where the colors are a lot more contrasting and not blending in so much. So I think I'm going to kind of use what I've learned between both to kind of make a good happy medium for the ocean. I started by lightening up the far away part of the ocean and now I'm just kind of blending that down into my plain teal color. For all of the waves, they're kind of lighter in the back, and then as they kind of come forward and kind of crash upon the shore, that's where they get the white part. So you can see this one kind of 
fades from the dark into a lighter color and then into pure white on the very, very front. I've gotten this far with the ocean, but I'm not sure I like how it looks. Now, I like the color, I kind of like where the waves are, but it feels kind of dead and static to me. It doesn't feel like it has any energy, it's kind of plain. Now, if I go back to my little test here, I feel like this has a lot more energy to it, um, and I think that's just because my brush, I kind of painted a bit looser, um, sloppy is another word for that, but they call it lucent painting because it sounds nicer. Um, and it gives it a lot more energy, like it's moving, like there's action going on. So I think I'm gonna kind of add some of this loose brushwork into it. I think the ocean is coming along, but I don't think it's done yet but I really feel like something's missing and it's hard to kind of tell what I want to do with the ocean until I feel like that missing thing is kind of taken care of. So I'm going to go ahead and start to add some of the trees and rocks in over here and then I'll start painting them. I'm going to start by filling in the tree trunks and on my palette I have some burnt umber, I have some carbon black, and then I have some titanium white. So I'm going to start by putting down the brown and then I'll be using the black and white um, and kind of mixing a gray into that also to start adding some value and texture to these tree trunks. Now I'm going to be starting with the far away ones. So the ones back here that are real small, I'm going to start with them. To fill in the leaves, I have a few greens on my palette. I have a Jenkins green, and that's going to be the base for all of them. So they kind of get a nice shadow underneath the lighter leaves on top. And then some are going to be more of an emerald green, which is more of like a phthalo. And then um, some of them are going to be more of a yellow green, um, and that's just because some of them are very close, and it'll help differentiate which leaves go with which tree. To apply these leaves, I just have an old brush where um, the edges of the bristles have kind of splayed outwards and they're not all nice together. And I'm just kind of dipping it a little bit in the paint, tapping it um, on the palette just to get some of the paint off, and then I'm coming up here to the canvas and just tapping it onto the canvas itself. Once I have a difference between the green trees and the yellow green trees, I can start to add in a bit more highlights. So I've just mixed each of the colors with a little bit of white and I'm just going to tap in a few leaves with that. There's a lot of layers on those leaves and I really like how it's come together. There's a lot of variation between them and it almost looks like there's like a bunch of different leaves on there. So I always do a lot of layers on things like that when I want to make sure it's kind of individual and speckled like that. So it's really come together well and the next thing I need to do is start to draw in some of the boulders. And I'm just going to take my chalk like I did for the trees and start to block those in. For all of these rocks, I still have some of these colors left on my palette, and I'm just going to use the same things but with a bit more gray just to differentiate them from everything else, and then I'm just going to be using the black and white to add some value.
Once the rocks are there, I did put a little bit of shadows of the ones that are sitting on the sand, but the ones that are sitting in the water, I'm just putting a little bit of white at the bottom so like the waves are just barely crashing up against them. And we're done! We have the Silent Cartographer level from Halo 1. If you're interested in this piece, you could buy a print, or a poster, or bid on this original canvas. There's links down below. Also, consider supporting me on Patreon. You can find out more at supportmal.com. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes of Mal Makes, and I'll see you again here for another video game painting.